Just like a pallet, we land shit down. My man bitch and then I shocked the whole town. Nah, for real. <clears throat> like, comment, share, subscribe. We about to do a reaction. This is gonna be my last reaction about anything to do with Tulsa. I've never really did anything about no Tulsa and then some gang shit, really, or some shit. But how gang started, like, I remember my daddy when I was little used to tell me about all the dang gangs. And, well, not, he didn't used to tell me about the gang, but where he was from, I kind of just kind of peeped where he was from because he used to put it on his gang so much. On the set, you know, niggas be all mad and shit. And what's crazy is not to even be blabbering off before. What's crazy is growing up. Still, I ain't gonna say still to this day because I don't want to be from no game, but Hoover is the last gang I will ever be from, type of shit. Like, I don't know why. I just, I'm an underdog. Like, whenever it's like basketball team and shit, I don't go for the best people. I go for an underdog type of shit. Not saying I'm going for any gangs or anything like that because that shit did as fuck. I'm going for sure. Cap, you feel me? If it ain't sure, then it's a bird scent. You feel what I'm saying? On a shirt. Price. A certified Hoover Crip who police wanted to question for several shoes. Not that she said a certified. <laughs> she said a certified Hoover Crip. <laughs> wow. And what's crazy is that I think that's Tariah's cousin or like daddy or uncle or something. Because Price is crazy. Shootings and killings. Marquise Pig Smith of 55th Street Hoover was wanted for shooting with intent to kill. And Hmm. Crazy. Marquis Craven, a four deuce gang. He look he looked familiar. Gang member had just gotten out of federal prison when they caught him with a forty four caliber handgun. There are over three thousand documented gang members here in Tulsa. The Crips and Blood started in Los Angeles, California. I think it's three thousand gang members in Tulsa, bro. Is y'all counting the eight, nine year olds that is like gonna be a gang member eventually? Y'all probably thought I was a hoover. But that'll never be it. Oh, never join a game. Because y'all know what y'all want to know why I'll never join a game. I hate that I'm blabbering off so much, but basically, I'll never join a game because I got anger issues and I can't. One of my friends died. I'm ready to do anything, bro. Like, I'm so glad that everything happened how it happened. I'm like, glad to have my daddy like left, but how every situation pinned out made me the person I am today on my soul. I don't even want to fight nobody. I don't want to lay a fucking finger on nobody. I just want positivity, bro. I didn't prove myself, bro. It's nothing else to prove. Killing ain't proving nothing. Beating people up ain't even proving nothing. Bro. It's about how you react to situations in life is what make you a man. But as gang members got caught up with the law, they fled the city and state. As gang members landed in these cities, they would start to form gangs within the inner city. Y'all better show some Tulsa shit. This is Cali shit. And outskirts. One of these places being Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa was mainly known for Black Wall Street, referring to the Greenwood District, which was a prosper. Hey, what's crazy is Surecap react to this. Surecap is the most lit nigga that ever come out. I'm. This is before. before I've been feeling like this. But it's time to put the work in and show y'all that this is true. Like, I'm the most lit person to ever come out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I don't even want to say Oklahoma in general because anything can happen somewhere else. I don't know what the fuck a nigga do, but it's a lot of big people. It's a lot of people that didn't hit millions of views on YouTube. Millions, millions. It's B. Lou Zayas, it's Tyler Babies, it's the other guy, Yoshi, the Yo Show. I mean, but. For a person to be this consistent, this long, never falling off. Do y'all know how hard it is to stay popping? To, like A lot of people, when they blow up as a kid, they just like slowly fade. They don't really become, you know, they ain't really nobody. Like they grow up like, a, you know, I don't want to just start naming people, but you know what I'm trying to say. Like, and I didn't super blow up. I just always been lit. Now that I blew up, it's like, I'm a new face still. You feel what I'm saying? So it's not like. You know, but the people are the people that know know, and I got that. I got that. First African American community in the early 20th century. It was named after the Main Street, Greenwood Avenue, and was a thriving business and cultural hub for Black residents, gaining prominence during the oil boom of the 1910s. Black entrepreneurs and professionals established successful businesses, including banks, hotels, theaters, and various shops. Greenwood became a symbol of economic self-sufficiency and resilience in the face of racial segregation and. Hey, what's crazy is like we can I can try to do something positive and I ain't gonna say it won't turn out right. 
but just the power that I have. Like June, he did his shit. Just I ain't gonna say just to blow up, but he knew what he was doing. Helping the community, everything is a way to to get to the top. But for a person that that's willing to keep doing it, a person that's that's willing to take it that extra, the uh, a person willing to speak on everything like me, it's too powerful. Too powerful. <laughs> they didn't think I was gonna kick the door down. I'm here. Discrimination destroyed in a racially motivated attack. The event is often referred to as the Tulsa Race Massacre. The violence began when a young black man named Dick Rowland was accused of assaulting a young white woman named Sarah Page. The details of the incident remain unclear, but it served as a pretext for white mobs to attack the black community. Over the course of 18 hours, the white mobs, including some deputized by the police, looted, burned, and destroyed much of the Greenwood District. Homes and businesses were torched, and many black residents were killed. The exact number of casualties is uncertain. That shit illegal. It's no such thing as legal or illegal. It's motherfucker, we run shit. You know, whatever my brain thinks at this moment is how it's going to go. It's no such thing as laws. <laughs> It hit different, don't it? There's such thing as uh, commandments. There's no such thing as laws. Because laws, commandments. He's commanding you guys to do this shit right. Laws, I don't even know what the fuck that means. But estimates. It don't mean a commandment. Damn, that shit hit different. Just that hundreds of people died and thousands were left homeless. Nowadays, like last year, they had just found, they still finding bodies from the 1921. The aftermath. And then they got the nerve to put June. This nigga must have created this motherfucking video. Of the Tulsa race massacre had a devastating impact on the black community in Tulsa. Many businesses and homes were destroyed, and Black Wall Street grew into one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the city, now known as nothing more than the hood. Some of the worst Tulsa gang members are now behind bars. I found my baby with her head blow. Just with the back of her head. The, the back of her head. We have surveillance video of a shootout between two men that happened. Oh, shit. What the fuck? They showing all type of shit. At a Tulsa convenience store on Friday. One person is now in custody, and police say it's another gang shooting between a Hoover Crip and a member of the Bloods. In the late 80s, the Hoover Crips and neighborhood Crips would flee California, bringing the Crip identity to Tulsa. While the biggest Crip gang in Tulsa is the 107 Hoovers, having multiple break-off sets spread around North and East Tulsa. The biggest star of the Tulsa Crips would come from a neighborhood called 51st Street. The Y'all made this for me to do a reaction video and try to tell y'all that this is not what it is. Star, none other than a rapper, Gangster June, better known as The Hope. Gangster June? Is y'all sitting here making him seem like he's a fucking gang gangster? Not saying you can't fight or you not like that. And they just like, this video is basically about Gang June. They tried to fucking, like, wow, this is crazy. Everybody in Tulsa knows that this shit is fake as fuck. This shit is like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? 51st Street, bro. Like, the whole, bro, sure, cap lucky, the whole, bro. I ain't gonna okay. cap. Faced with unruly obstacles at home, growing up. Hey. June, tap in, bro. We need to do another one of these big barbecues, man. We got to hope to fucking Tulsa up again, bro, because it's a lot of negativity going on, bro. I'm trying to bring peace and positivity throughout everything, bro. It was never easy for June, raised by a drug-addicted mother and sent to live with his grandmother on a battlefield of gangs feuding. Gangs like... Nigga, they put, nigga, they put bubble gas video in there. June, raised by a drug-addicted mother and sent to live... With his grandmother on a battlefield of gangs feuding gangs like the hoovers would get in shootouts with the biggest blood gang in the city the 5-2 red mob nigga what is this mob bloods, often over the drug trade seeing how this affected his friends this must be 
Tulsa rap music. This is Tulsa rap music. And family, June decided not to drink or smoke. June started writing poems and singing with his grandmother at church and became really in tune with himself through spiritual practice. Due to this rough upbringing, June would form what many call ghetto gospel. I'm a chase with my little girl, 10,000 paid and fit. Nigga, this is like, why did y'all made this about gang June? He's not a fucking gang banger. Nigga, if this ain't got nothing to do with Shercat, well, I don't want myself in there anyway. Don't put me in no video. Claiming the rolling 40s. Right under June, Tulsa has B. Lou. He is a YouTuber who started out posting reactions to popular rap songs and videos before he started rapping on his own. He is most famous for being one half of the channel Zias, which has found great popularity with its reaction videos. He has also been partnered with 300 Entertainment and GRM Daily. Born as Bishop Louie on the 23rd of September, 1995, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, he was raised by his parents alongside his younger sister, Bread, and a brother. B. Lou was a football star in high school and had affiliation with the 5-2 Red Mob Bloods, though it's <laughs> B. Lou, what you got to say about this, bro? And that's why that's why they trying to figure out what like they they trying to figure out like what is shirt cap from? You don't even know what shirt cap from. It hit different. I'm not from shit. Everybody is good friend. Like when you grow up with people, everybody just randomly pick shits. Whenever we were fucking 14 years old, niggas just was flipping gangs, and I was just friends with whoever. Anyways, like the fuck. As I got older, I completely cut everybody off and got in a relationship and got out the relationship type shit. And then I start rapping. And then whenever I start rapping, I, I knew it was a, it's unclear know. if he's an official member. The 5-2 Red Mob has taken over the streets of Tulsa. Members have been picked up in human trafficking and other violent offenses. An example of this is on Friday, March 11th, a shootout between two men that have this Tulsa trip, they getting off. Happened at a Tulsa convenience store. The suspects involved were a 107 Hoover and the Red Mob. Jamarcus Richardson was later picked up and charged for the unlawful shooting. The 107 Hoover would later be taken to the hospital where he would be treated and released back into the public. The gangs of Tulsa don't just stop there though. They have gangster disciples, Latin Kings, Serenos, Northsiders, the 456 Pyru, and homegrown cliques like the Denver Made Hustlers, Indian Empire Bloods, and G-Unit Crips. There's a long running feud between the Green Team and the Hoover Crips. That started because- This bitch said Green Team. <laughs> hey, you can tell this shit all the little bitch. This <laughs> said Green Team. Oh my God. Oh my God. Because one gang member looked at a rival gang member the wrong way. That led to most of the shootings and killings. Hey, I'm not looking at y'all niggas. No, nigga. Hold on. Killings we've seen in the past few months. It's not like the days of, of uh, the old red and blue uh, that it used to be. Things are, things are very different now. Most of these gangs formed in the mid 2000s and have clicked up or tied flags to overpower. What's crazy is they they love that we really on some well we not we but us as black people still game man still beefing with each other whenever when we go to jail it's like do y'all understand this it's a power that's more stronger than somebody else that you're going against in the streets like the police is the come on bro come on bro please bro y'all know math y'all know how to read Y'all should know common sense to come together. Niggas didn't die, but niggas, police, niggas didn't die with that shit too. Y'all ain't doing, I'm not telling y'all to do that to nobody, but motherfuck. We're not, we shouldn't be beefing with ourselves, bro. We're not getting pulled over and got to pay 800 and we're not getting forced to pay shit because the, the arrival wanted to pull us over and make us give them some money. Oh, my. Or their enemy. Unless niggas was getting robbed or something. It's, it's all type of shit to go Even on. gangs like the Irish mob would battle for the drug trade of Tulsa. When people usually say, Irish mob, white men in black suits carrying Tommy guns pop into your head. But the truth is, the Irish mob isn't an actual organization like the Five Families of New York, but instead, a name given to those of Irish background. These are self-proclaimed Irish mob members, and more so, a meth ring. Members aren't wearing black suits, but instead pulling up in pickup trucks and waving around rebel flags. Regardless of their looks, you should take them seriously. 
seriously and keep away from them because they have ties to a string of homicides within Tulsa. But outside of the gangs, you have pimps. P Nice claims to be the biggest pimp in Turley, Oklahoma. Turley is a Gosh. Gosh, bro. Do y'all understand? Who is this? Ain't no way y'all said he's the biggest pimp in Oklahoma, bro. Small section in Tulsa, and you may This is some fucking this is yeah, y'all playing. Be wondering who runs Y'all and then y'all just see y'all basically said Gang June is the leader of all gangs of Hoovers the outside of Tulsa. Well, they have white trash gangs, the Red Mob, and some Hoovers. The Red Mob would dabble in the pimp game. The Red Mob pimp game was run by a man named Joshua Herring, also known as Maniac, who was a high-ranking member of the Red Mob Bloods and wanted to make some fast cash. Joshua decided to run an escort service, but couldn't do this alone, so he would contact his close friends to help him run his business. Joshua contacted Tajwan Alexander, Stephen Gonzalez, Letitia Perkins, keep going, just on GP. Dewan Allen and his girlfriend, Morgan Palmer. At the beginning of December 2015, Joshua and Morgan would try their best to find employees, but nobody wanted to work for him. I have no idea why he couldn't get employed, but maybe it's because Pee Wee was running the game and nobody could stop him. So Joshua and his partners, crazy. They're crazy. Why are y'all trolling? Started recruiting underage children to work for him. This is disgusting, and I want to note that most Red Mob didn't approve of this. The Tulsa PD Vice Unit busted Josh's sick operation on Backpage.com, but knowing something else was up, they looked into it more and eventually found Palmer and the rest of the 52 affiliates. A victim and former employee of this sex trafficking business helped expose them, and she was only 16. Joshua isn't getting off easy though. Dude's looking at a solid 22 years in the federal pen. No chance for parole. I have even seen some of you guys saying that he's in PC. This is likely over the red mob, not wanting to be affiliated with chomos. For whatever reason, a member of the 111 neighborhood Crips and a 5-2 member don't want this getting out. While wow. gangs often clash with certain ideas, the sad truth is that these race-based gangs mainly fight with each other. Nobody deserves to be shot down like animals on the street. It's an issue that is close to Dio Atatugal's heart. In 2005, his son Joseph was gunned down in a suspected gang shooting. Then last month, his youngest son was also shot. He's expected to recover. Dayo is hopeful, seeing these agencies working together to protect kids. Everyone, we need to work together. This is the truth of the gangs of Tulsa. Let me know what city, state, or gang I should cover next. Never cover Tulsa again. You did... You did good with like, like comedy. I don't know how to explain it. Like, okay, you put the different people like what they from. Obvious, this is what they posting. Like, oh, I'm from this. I'm from this. So you can't lie about that. But when it comes to P, like P Nice and shit, saying he's the biggest uh, pimp, and then saying Gang June is the biggest gang banger, when we all know that both, I ain't gonna say. Matter of fact, I don't know. I don't know, niggas. I don't, honestly, but I need to clip one of these parts for the fucking Instagram because ain't no way, bro. I'm about to be out of content anyways, really, when it comes to interviews. I'm about to drop this A3 Degree King little part just to keep my shit kind of like, you know, they like, he dropping every day, he drops something type shit. And then, it's crazy. I might start posting on my backup page. On some some random clips of this shit, my reaction videos. I don't know. I don't want to water shit down though. You know, a nigga trying to nigga trying to stay going up. You know, you feel me? Still trying to stay up though. And keep going. You feel me? Like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to share and subscribe.